I'm gonna burn with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes minus hundred dollars, I'm still gonna stack sats. If Bitcoin makes me poor every year, I'm still gonna stack sats. And I'm gonna try to work hard to rehabilitate the system. They gave everybody in Canada a six hundred dollars check, but they gave the insiders billions of dollars. I expect all victory for Bitcoin. If Bitcoiners are smart enough, they're gonna get organized and they're gonna push back and we're gonna reclaim our countries and we're gonna build a better world. We're at the same moment that history when the French Revolution was starting to gain momentum and that everybody realized that absolute monarchies were obsolete. Bitcoin is not left, is not right, is not pro-Russia, is not pro-America, it's just a ledger anchored in mathematics and physics, decentralized with energy as its backbone. I actually want to start with, with the, the, the question that I asked you before we started the recording. Um, with uh, you quit your job, I see see it more and more that Bitcoiners are like uh, sick with their fiat job. They are sick with their fiat system in general. Um, so I guess you quit your job, and it played a uh, Bitcoin played a big role in that, right? Well, listen, I've been working uh, like in in Canadian politics, and obviously politics is never perfect okay, because you need to reach a consensus, and to reach a consensus, well, you need to sacrifice many uh, stuff that are important for you to reach, uh, you know, that middle ground. And I could understand that. But, like, something happened before COVID where almost it seems like, uh, you know, the, the Western government got activated and they went against everything that, every everything that are the Western values, you know, the freedom of speech, the individual freedoms, the freedoms to protest, the freedom to choose you know, what you're going to do with your own body and stuff like that. I feel that, like, uh, the world almost turned upside upside down for me. And at the beginning, during the pandemic, I mean, I was uh, I was helping people through my job and, you know, doing my stuff. And uh, I had people call me crying, you know, uh, like, Canada is destroyed. And I'm like, no, Canada is not destroyed. It's temporary, you know. And then came the inflation. Because at first they told us, listen, if we print tons of money, uh, it's not going to be a problem because this or that, they lied. So uh, they gave everybody in Canada a $600 check, but they gave the insiders billions of dollars. And I mean, it was the biggest wealth transfer from the middle class to the elites in the history uh, of the world since we record the, the money. So they basically pillaged the public treasure. So there I felt really uncomfortable with everything, how it was playing out, because I know they basically lied to us about everything. And finally came Gaza, the genocide uh, in, in Gaza. And that was last, my, my last straw. And I was like, I, I couldn't focus. I couldn't do my job anymore because I saw the Western government, you know, whitewash, uh, ongoing genocide continue to support it through uh, military aid and other financial means and uh, like all of the nonsense and, and the hypocrisy going around it, it felt me, it, 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 for me, it became impossible. And already, I mean, I was, uh, I was at Bitcoin. I was uh, shit posting. I was uh, listening to podcasts, talking to people. I, every week I tried to orange pill somebody and I haven't stopped, you know, every week it can be anybody. I, I just like to put the information in the brain and after it's up to them to decide. But the genocide was uh, really my last straw and like uh, the, uh, the, I parted ways uh, for now with Canadian politics, but I'm a political organizer. So for me, I'm going to do politics all my life, knowing different. It can be on the municipal level. It can be on the provincial level. It can be on the federal level because I'm not the kind of Bitcoiner as we see a lot on X that say the that have that fear of the government because my view is if you don't ke take care of politics politics is gonna take care of you politics is just a, a peaceful arena but voting is a powerful thing because it's when you vote for somebody it, it means that if it wasn't a peaceful system where you can make your views known through voting this is where you would fight it so that that's what it is it's it's a caste system of uh, it's a play of power. But what what I can tell to your uh, audience is that in Canada at least the system works. The system was made by God fearing men that were much smarter than us, that were much closer to God than us, that were much more 
uh, statesmen than the garbage people that we have running our countries today. And these people, they made us a functional system that has been abused. And it's not the system that's dysfunctional. Is that there's people not doing their jobs. When you do corruption, when you do, uh, like, supporting a genocide in Canada is illegal. So any minister that sent uh, weaponry to Israel during that act uh, should be put on trial. It, I mean, it's illegal. It's illegal in Canada to do it. But like in, in the United States, the same thing is in Canada. There's a lot of institutions that are corrupted and that don't do their job anymore. So for me, uh, I decided that uh, for now, I'm going to focus entirely on Bitcoin and try to do that next step in Bitcoin. And uh, But as I, I'm telling you, uh, I'm going to be interested in it all my life and continue to go back. Which uh, is kind of the, the topic that I released today with the guest. Um, and I want to ask you also this, this question that uh, he became at the, as the last question from uh, another guest from our end routine. Um, he was like, when the question was like, when would you flee your country? Which raises an interesting question. Um, when shit hits the fan in your country, I don't know, in Canada, something even more dramatic happens or in whatever country you are. Uh, and then uh, you have to decide, okay, do I fight and get involved in the politics in my country and try to change something where I live currently, where my family is, where my roots are? Or is it not worth the risk uh, or is it not worth the hustle? And I just flee to a Bitcoin country like El Salvador, like uh, so many other countries where they're a little bit more friendly to it, even Swiss and Europe and stuff like that. Would you rather like, are you the personality that says like, okay, let's let's go to another country. Obviously, when the politics fuck up here, then we can flee. Or would you stay and say like, oh, let's fight for the politics here. Let's fix our... Uh, financial system here like or, or where's the point where you would say like oh i have to flee now well it's a it's a it's a funny question because i'm not born in canada i'm born in bosnia herzegovina i fled bosnia as a child when i was uh, 10 years old as a war refugee so i've been in the civil war in next yugoslavia i've been wounded in both of my legs as a child uh, as a civilian and so i fled with my mother, my initial country to go to Canada. But the, the fleeing wasn't up to me. It was a decision that my mother made. And my father got killed and, you know, it was awful. The war, we didn't have anything to eat. So we came to Canada. But for me, it's different. I would never flee the country. Because I understand that uh, the system now is global anyway. And these forces that are going to destroy Canada today, well, they're, they, they're going to destroy El Salvador tomorrow. So the goal is not to flee the countries is to restore every country to the values to our you know western civilized values democratic va values that are not perfect but uh, to restore every country to the ideas of enlightenment because now what we are seeing basically is hidden autocracies that the, the 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 revolutions have been hijacked all across you know and now you have a caste that's running these countries that are completely disconnected from the masses, that live in ivory towers, literally, that have their mansions, villas, yachts, okay? And out, they, they, they don't give a fuck about what's going on with the masses. So it's up to us to understand that and not to be in a fleeing mode. But, you know, obviously, if there's a warlike situation and temporarily you need to move your family and yourself to safety, I will never judge that. But I think that every citizen's duty is to stay and fight for what he thinks his country should be. And I mean, we're not going to agree. Even me and you, we won't agree on many things how we see our country uh, should be. But we can agree on the minimum, on a country being peaceful, and uh, not crime-ridden, not corruption-ridden, not pollution-ridden, you know, and these things. Because... The problem we have right now is that the people in charge are just blatantly lying to everybody. And the masses, they are blind to their lies because, first of all, they don't understand how money works. And the core of all of our problems are in the money. So that's why Bitcoin is such a huge thing. And that's why it exploded my brain when I finally understood what it is. So, no, my answer is I would not flee it. And even now, I see Canada as my country, too. I see Boston as my country. I see Canada as my country. 
And I see every, you know, uh, country that uh, that that uh, wants to better its citizenry and, uh, you know, everybody else as my country as well. I, I would help defend El Salvador. I, I'm, I'm posting a lot about America because I was always an American of Phil. And I think that the, the ideals of the American framers are very important. And they are not a nice, American Revolution is not an isolated act. It was a continuation of the mankind struggle towards freedom, God, and liberty and prosperity, individual rights, and stuff like that. So for me, I don't think uh, anybody should be looking at it that way to flee, you know, because at the end of the day, it's going to catch us up no matter where you're at. So while we're young, better to focus and spread our ideas and, and do the things that we can. Not everybody should be going to politics either, you know. You, you can be political in many ways. Voting is being political. Talking about Bitcoin is being political. Bitcoin is a very political thing because we want to defund the state. We want to take the money from the hands of the state and put it again in the hands of the people. So that's very political. So that's why I, I, I posted the other day a, a short video, you know, when these uh, samurai guys got arrested. Tell the people, what did you expect? It's going to get much worse than that. Like, don't think that these uh, el elites are just going to let us, you know, uh, create this whole new world that is more just, more decentralized and, and, and nothing about. It. I mean, this is just a small example. It can be, it can be very, very rough work. So then we need to organize and to fight back, push back and to, uh, to try to fix our country. What, what do you expect as a, a tax like uh, you you're talking of attacks from the fiat system against Bitcoin against Bitcoin companies so the the attacks that they started like I feel like 2013 was kind of the first real attack from China against Bitcoin uh, ever since they tried and tried a little bit more and a little more aggressive it has less and less impact of course on Bitcoin because Bitcoin becomes more and more big and more and more stable but is there something that you uh, like foresee or something that you expect that they it, they will definitely try? Well, first of all, I expect total victory for Bitcoin. Why? Because it was attacked by China and it was attacked by the United States of America and it still survived and still ongoing and it's stronger than ever. And there's no human creation in this world that can be attacked by China and the United States and still go on as usual. There's nothing. There's no country, there's no uh, company, there's no army, there's nothing that exists today except Bitcoin that can uh, say that that happened. So I expect total victory. But after what they're going to do, well, it's going to depend on the number of people we orange pill. Like in Canada right now, uh, out of uh, 40 million population, there's about 8 million people that hold uh, or, or that held crypto. Okay. And obviously we know that. Bitcoin is not crypto, and that crypto is shit quite a essentially. So out of that 8 million, let's say that maybe 5 million have Bitcoin. And then on that 5 million, how many do truly understand Bitcoin? How many are there for the deep purposes of Bitcoin, not just to make a speculative gain in fiat and go in and go out, you know? So maybe 2 million. But that's still a lot of people. And if you get to a tipping point where you have a sufficient people in a country then you can block those attacks. But it can be evil. What do I expect? Anything. I expect people to be thrown in jail. I expect property to try to be seized. I expect laws to be passed that make that can make Bitcoin totally illegal. You know, they can try anything. But uh, will they succeed? No, they will fail. Because Bitcoin is also uh, a revolution of our generation. Okay. Boomer had their things. The boomer... Uh, they, they, you know, they, 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 they did the, 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 the Bretton Woods standard and these are all things that they did to take the gold out. But now we're coming with digital gold and this is our system as well. So it's, uh, and, and we're going to live longer, you know, boomers are going to retire. So eventually we're going to win. But until then, I expect many more, uh, you know, stuff to happen. About samurai, well, they were touting the state as well, you know, and you should do that. You shouldn't out the state you, you you shouldn't provoke the state because the state is powerful and it, you know the individuals they can be put in jail 
look at Assange, what happened to him. He was just saying the truth. He was exposing uh, crimes, you know, on civilians. And he's still rotting in, in, in jail today. So everybody should be careful and not, you know, uh, town the state. But at the same time, should continue to push, uh, you know, their vision of the future they want to build. And as more people as we get, the more countries that we unlock, because now El Salvador, Salvador is basically unlocked. Well, once we have a strong enough coalition, well, then then there's nothing that can stop it. And then everything can go on the Bitcoin standard without the, the, this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, attacks on us. I loved also what you said before with uh, fight for freedom and prosperity and, and the liberty of, of the human being. Was that the initial reason you you came into the politics uh, first, and probably is now the reason that you are in Bitcoin? But this was this also the reason why you came in politics? The first reason why I came in Canadian politics is to legalize weed, because that was a promise in 2015. The why to legalize weed is not just because I want to get high and smoke weed. You need to understand that in Canada, before the legalization, 90% of criminal uh, cases were simple possession of marijuana. So these were basically kids smoking a joint that went to jail, that had their lives completely ruined, that suddenly became criminals afterwards because they, they experienced the carceral system, they couldn't uh, travel to America, they couldn't get a nice job afterwards because, because they had a criminal record. So, I mean, it was a disaster. And imagine the lawyers, the judges, all the papers and everything that was uh, going on. And it literally put $8 billion in the pockets of criminals every year. And, you know, before you, you, we used to say, you know, marijuana is a gateway drug. No, it's not. It's the dealer that's going to offer you other drugs if you go to the dealer to buy uh, marijuana. And the state was pushing the civilians to do business with criminals because they prohibited a product that was consumed by like 15 million people in Canada. And those people weren't going to stop smoking weed. Okay, Canada is known for very good weed and very strong weed. So that was my first reason to go into the politics. And I had a, you know, a friend of mine also that had some political ambitions. And we worked together and it was great. And, uh, but that, that was really the, the, the first reason. But I, I, I always loved my fellow man. I knew that uh, if I, I got in any position that uh, inside the sector, I was always going to work hard to help, you know, uh, anybody that I can. And that's what I did. I helped a lot of people and I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot of stuff. Uh, as I tell you, I went around the country uh, to, you know, to, um, to some uh, meetings where old ladies would tell us, why would you legalize weed? It's going to be terrible. It's going to be the end of Canada as we know it. And uh, we did it and today. I mean, you can just go into the store, buy yourself a pre roll joint. There's boomers in the line, all people buying their uh, THC oils. So it's it, it was a great success. So that's that's the main reason. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's it's it, it's at that point. It's I think so clear why you have to legalize it. Uh, there, there are so many studies. Like I think Portugal was a big study. Uh, the, they showed how, how they actually fight against drugs more uh, effectively when they allowed those kind of drugs. I don't know how, I don't know if they're completely open or uh, what they don't allow in Portugal, uh, but they kind of collected the tax money and tried to educate people uh, with that tax money. And this was like a complete game changer. I feel like it's a, um, I mean, this also brings us to a topic where, like, where do we see the, the world going with politics in general? Like, where where do we see when, when Bitcoin is the sound money as a completely the fundamental of our basis, of our human beings? Uh, then we have fallen states, at least as I see it, because they have to actually bring a service to uh, the citizens to actually exist, because if we have to pay taxes people will ask like oh why do i have to pay the taxes if you can't just inflate it out of their wallets nobody asks questions because their inflation is normal seemingly uh, <laughs> uh so uh what 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 do you think will will this make uh, uh as a world like uh, as you also have the background in in politics what do you think will will bitcoin in the long run especially like five ten twenty fifty years maybe even 
or maybe even like 100 years um, make with the world? Well, first of all, I don't think it's that long. I think that we can safely talk about 10 years. You know, 10 years for me, it seems like Bitcoin is going to gain a lot of maturity. Well, what, what I think is that uh, with the resources that Bitcoin unlocks for Bitcoiners every year, every four years, every 10 years, we're going to get a lot of more uh, spending power. And then we're going to be able to do what we wish with that spending power. Uh, some of us will plant forests, build beautiful homes, help our fellow man do philanthropy, but others are going to use those resources to fix our countries. So how do I see it? I see us winning. And when you say the taxes are necessary, well, the taxes are basically a mirage because nobody pays enough taxes right now to fund the spending of the state. It, they take the taxes, obviously, because they don't want a bigger hole, but also because it's just a control method, essentially. The president of El Salvador, he, he said it well in his uh, recent uh, uh, speech, is that they're spending money at the rate where taxes won't cover it. And we're, we're just getting in deeper and deeper in debt. How do I see the world, the politics of the Bitcoin standard once we win? Well, there, there won't be no taxes because if the states, the inflation also, why, the, why is the inflation 2%? Why was that the objective? Now it's 15% because they lost control, uh, stealing all, all, of these all of this money. But before it was 2%. Why was it 2%? Well, it was 2% because you can steal 2% from the people without them noticing, noticing it that much. So it was, that's the only reason, is the, the ability to steal slowly. But the inflation should be at 0% and people should pay zero taxes because the state should manage its resources in a responsible way where it, it can grow its prosperity without sucking it away from the people. And after, if the families are richer, if the individuals are richer in a state, well, it's going to fix everything. It's going to help the state become more prosperous because obviously rich people are going to do more philanthropy, are going to get engaged. They're, you know, they're, they, they have the resources. But what is going on right now is that the state is making us all poorer and lowering our standard of living. And it is, it is making our countries look like third world countries right now because that's the direction where, where it's pushing. We have the system right now working against the citizen. The, the system does not represent the citizen no more. It has been hijacked by, by a lot of interests, indirectly and directly. Once we fix that, well then we can have a state that can create prosperity without stealing it from its populace. Because just imagine the energy that is produced every year in Canada. There's much of that energy that is totally wasted during the time that it's not consumed. Well, instead of being wasted, if it was stored into Bitcoin, imagine the prosperity it could generate for the country. I mean, these are, these are quantities of energies that are wasted that are mind boggling and the waste is everywhere, in every department. And the government keeps going around choosing winners and losers, giving billions to companies that don't need it, corporations that buy back their own stocks, that declare losses in Canada and declare profits elsewhere in the world that play these financial games. So, I mean, it's all rigged. Right now, we have a, a game that is rigged against us. And once we fix the game and that the state, once again, starts to work for its citizenry, there will be no need for taxes. The, and the, the state will collect its revenue from another ways. Because if you create prosperity, if you create innovation, if you let the space for freedom to happen and for market to operate, prosperity is going to be created everywhere. And then the state is going to be able to, to, to get it. And I'm not saying like the state should not take any fees anywhere. No. I'm just telling you that the personal taxes were put in place during World War II as a temporary measure, okay, to fund the war. And when the war ended, they kept the, the, the taxes on revenue in Canada. And the next generation, they weren't informed and they just kept paying taxes, you know. And you need to understand something, Robert. Once the government takes an inch from you, it's not giving it back to you. You need to take that inch back. 
okay? And the government is just going to keep and keep and keep on taking those inches because right now the system is rigged against us. So, and earlier when I tell you the system works, I meant the system to get elected and take a part of the control of the system. But right now we control very few uh, positions of power. There are very few good men that are there exclusively for the masses. Okay? There are few of them. There are few of them in Canada. There are few of them in the in, in the United States. The majority are there just because they want a job. Okay, just because they want a job, they don't want to offend too many people. They want to get reelected, so they have their little job. Okay, and they will serve interests, you know, without knowing it too too much and without you know overthinking it, and. So it's it's truly a one party system that we have in Canada because they're playing ball together. You know, it's like a, a left hand scratch, a right hand scratch, a left hand hand scratch. So people, when they tell me, "Oh, Paul Yev is coming, Canada Trudeau is out," because Trudeau is gonna lose now the next election. That's guaranteed. The, the numbers are, are awful. He's out. Uh, the ultimate date that Trudeau can stay in power is October two thousand twenty five. After that date. We're, before even we're going to have an election and he's going to be kicked out on his ass. But the problem is the people coming in are the same people, okay? They're the same fucking people. It's just they play. When you hear somebody tell you left versus right, well, that means he doesn't understand what the fuck is going on. There's no left versus right. There's the government and the cronies around the government and there's us, the people, trying to make it in this world, okay? And we're having a very hard time making it since inflation is has made us 25% poorer in the last 3 years how how can you how can you work in that world you can you're becoming poor and your st- standard of living is dropping there is uh, i had a, the the author of bitcoin nations on my, my my podcast and he made the big statement that a democracy cannot work when the government is collecting taxes like as soon as uh, they start collecting taxes, the democracy is just uh, years or decades away from falling apart because this isn't. Uh, it it just does not work uh, uh, with with taxes and democracy itself. It seems like that you are also describing like uh, that the justice system works, like the getting in and out, and the democracy itself. But the the political system itself does not work. Like that's like. For me, like what I, where I see the, the differential between the, the, what you described. Exactly. Because the systems are anchored in some, uh, you know, in, in, in constitutional stuff that, that, is, that has been operating and that, that, that functions. But the problem is that every time you hear somebody say the politics, I don't care about the politics. This is what the, the, the people in charge, they want because it's less people to control, to, 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 and they use propaganda, they use money, they, they use all kinds of methods, you know, to 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 get your vote. The, the, rea- the, the, the reality is the people have the power only one time, only one time, only during the election process. When you take that ballot and you put the X next to the name and you put it in that box, that's the only time you have the power in, in our democracy. Make, you vote for somebody that you think that is going to have your interests at heart. Don't vote for a party. Don't vote because the other guy is worse. Don't just vote with your heart with somebody that you deeply think this person will try to do his best for the masses. Okay, so that works. But after, I mean, it has been now years where the same parties have held power That's what, okay, in Canada and elsewhere. In the United States, I mean, the two-party system is a total, total illusion. I mean, these guys are the same insiders. They're talking to the same lobbies. They're having the same luncheons. They're, they're, they're you know, they're around the same crowd. Any system with time gets corrupted. Any system, any organization with time gets corrupted. So it's the same thing with the political system, you know. So what we need now is a fresh generation of people going into the politics and trying to do their best and saying no to the nonsense that they see, exposing it, talking about it, attacking it, and Bitcoin uh, 
uh, God willing, is going to give them the financial resources to be there and be able to stand in the middle of the storm. Because you can't do that without being attacked, without being smeared, without being, you know, point, uh, finger pointing and say people are going to call you crazy because the masses have not uh, waken up yet to the fact. Many people know that things are wrong. Many people are suffering. Many people can't afford their groceries even today. The groceries they, they, they used to buy, so they're going to buy some, some cheaper stuff, some less quality. But they don't know what, why, what, what's going on because they're being lied to. And also there's all of this propaganda machine that's brainwashing them constantly. So what we need to do is build our own machines to explain to the people what's going on and to have them, to urge build them. And I want to remind you, Robin, as well, that the American Revolution was only 3% of patriots. And the French resistance was only 5% of the French. And yet these two movements they won. So we don't need to convince a hundred percent of Canada or America or Europe. We just need that five percent of hardcore, you know, idealists that want to fix the system. And it's gonna it then it cycles. It's gonna get fixed for a time and it might go to shit again and it's gonna get fixed again. I mean when you see history, history is a big cycle of you know as we saw in memes, that bad, bad, uh, good men create, uh, you know, uh, bad men create bad ties, good men create good ties. So that's what's going on. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating for me to, to see the political systems. Uh, I mean, this year is a special one because we have American elections, we have European Union election, in Austria there are elections, but yeah, Austria is not that important for the uh, general population of the world, but. Uh, I live in Austria. I don't know, maybe it's in Canada also uh, elections? Yeah, it's going to be, like I tell you, it's uh, the the end, the the maximum date they can held it is in 2025, but I think it might be this other as well. Okay, okay. Is it actually, um, because you talked about there's a one-party, two-party, three-party system, is it a healthy sign for a country when there are like, four or five uh, parties that all have around like 10, 15, 20 percent of of, uh, of of voters or is it like uh, even worse when there's like a lot of parties involved and it, uh, it's spread out a lot? Well, I, I think the more parties you have, it's better for the system because it, it decent, decentralizes uh, political power, you know. But the problem we have in Canada is that the parties are all boomer parties and they align with some things that are complete nonsense so yeah we have a diversity of parties but on the important stuff like the created inflation and, and, and everything that surrounds it all of the parties in canada cheered for the covid spending and the covid handouts and the covid and and they all uh, you know explain to us that it's okay there's not gonna be inflation because they were just repeating points giving to them by global lobbying groups like McKinsey, because it all comes from Washington at the end. Washington is wrong, okay? The empire that we live in now is the American empire. Washington is wrong. Why do I follow American politics? Why do I shit post to my American patriots, friends? It's because I understand that it all starts there, okay? So the whole Western reaction to the COVID situation which now we learn that was created by the deep state and Fauci that went there and founded it. And all of these people should be put in jail because how many millions did they kill and what they did to the economy is, uh, is a crime. But like, that's the, that's, that's the problem, you know, that, that everybody agrees with these uh, bullet points that, that are being fed to them. And all of these parties, yeah, they're different parties, have different logos and different people. But they all agree on, on these things and they all agree, you know, we should do as our uh, as our allies and stuff like that. But it's all bullshit. I mean, if your ally is wrong and propose something to you, like, I can't believe that nobody in these parties had economists take a look about this debt spending and say to the people, listen, if you take this $600 check and if they send this money to all of these companies, most that don't need it, inflation is going to be this much, you know? Nobody said that. Everybody was telling us, stay, uh, you know, let, let's all stay together. We're all 
together in this, you know, all of these propaganda points. Do it for your your neighbor, you know, take the shot for your neighbor. We were completely brainwashed by everyone. So after that happened, I can't say that there's a many political party. Yeah, there's the illusion of many political party, but there's one big boomer party in Canada right now, and it has become obsolete because it no longer represents the 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 needs of the masses. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in the middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague Conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in the whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. Fascinating for me to see also the time that we are living in, as you described, is what's, what's going on with COVID, what's going on in general with, with the Bitcoin revolution, what's going on with the internet revolution that is also like kind of just started out. I mean, it's a few decades old, but uh, it, it's it's not that old. Is there any, and I, I know that you are also big in, in history, is there anything uh, that in compares to, to the time that we are living in and the time that might come in the next like a uh, few decades? Uh, do you have any uh, time in the history that kind of compares to what we are doing now? Yeah, uh, there's many times in history. And by the way, you said you were Austrian. I didn't know that. I thought you were somewhere from Scandinavia. I'm very happy to hear. We were once in history the same country. Basia was part of the austro uh Austro-Hungarian Empire, and there's many institutions that were set up in Bosnia that are still in use today. The railway, many of the railways that was built during the Austrian Empire, uh, is still the uh, still in use in Bosnia, and it was modernized in many institutions as well, the uh, political one. But empires they grow and they disappear, they they retract and they they go back. The American Republic, when it was created by the founding fathers. They knew exactly what they were doing and they knew exactly the tyranny that they were fighting. Okay. So they set up this constitution that really gave a lot of power to the to the individuals. When this republic after the World War II became the empire, when it shifted from American Republic that cared about the Americans and that cared about the liberty and prosperity of the American people, when that republic became an empire. It started not giving a fuck anymore about the Americans because now it became global. Now the American empire has centers in London, has centers obviously in Washington, D.C., and has uh, centers, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in many other spots across the world as the, the empire. And now the f main focus of that empire is no longer the needs of the American people. So that's why I always like to tweet restore the republic to my American patriot friends. Because once they restore the republic, they can have people that care about that. Yes, it happened a lot of time, happened in ancient Rome, uh, where, you know, because it's a slippery slope. You have, the, the situation gets to a boiling point, and then they start debasing money. And once you start debasing money, which now the American empire is doing at a large scale, at unprecedented scale, I mean, when you see these amounts, these amounts are mind-boggling. 
once this starts, well, it affects everybody because it affects even the stooges that work for the regimes because they're being paid in these monkey paper do worthless dollars. And it happened in ancient Rome where soldiers were being given coins that were so debased that the merchants wouldn't take these coins no more. <clears throat> so after it starts all kinds of problems and turbulences, and after it can it can go inside of the, it can become a total chaos. And like in ancient Rome, you had massive migrations coming into the uh, it Rome, like the, it's happening right now in America. Because right now in America, in Washington D.C., you have people working actively against the Americans. I mean the. Uh, uh, there, there was a, uh, a research that came out that said that there may be 20 million illegal citizens living in America right now. So imagine a country operating with 20 million people that, are, that have no status, status, that you don't know what they are doing and how they are doing. You can't have a society like that, you know? And these people are on the streets. What are they going to do? They're going to resort to crime okay? because they want to eat. They want to survive. They, 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 that it's the, the, the ugly face of humanity that, that comes out because people were, you know, when, when you, when you leave them with nothing, well, they're gonna, they're gonna resort to awful things. And you have the Biden administration literally leaving the border open, sending police to attack peaceful protesters, students on university campuses that are protesting against an ongoing genocide. But, Leaving an open border, which is being exploited by cartels, by foreign intelligence services, uh, ra Islamist radicals, and all kinds of rivals to the American people are going in in mass through this border. Why? Because as I told you earlier, they no longer give a fuck about the American populace. In the matter of fact is, they want to dilute it. They want to dilute the American populace. And they want to desire the American populace because they want to be able to grab even more power. And already the power they have grabbed is not total power, but it's getting close to total power because they have ways, you know, indirect ways to, to, to do basically anything. So you have terrible things that are going on right now and people are starting to notice it. Uh, you know, there, there are millions of people waking up to the fact that, wait a minute, Maybe this government is not having my best interests at heart, you know. But they need to change it. They need to reform. They need to engage at every level and to fight for every office that they can. They, you know, and that's why I'm very optimistic with uh, about the future because the Bitcoin is making us richer every year. Bitcoin is giving us resources every year. So if Bitcoiners are smart enough. They're going to get organized and they're going to push back and we're going to reclaim our, our countries and we're going to build a better world. And once we, we do that, well, we're going to turn to the stars. We're going to uh, colonize our uh, solar system. We're going to advance in mathematics, in research. I mean, listen, Robert, the era where we're living, in, you, you, you said it earlier. It's not only what you said with which I agree, though. It's also quantum computing, AI. Bitcoin, the political turbulences, the, the whole world system right now is obsolete in the way it has, it, it is operating. It's all obsolete. We're at the same moment that history when uh, the French Revolution was starting to gain momentum and that everybody realized that absolute monarchies were obsolete. Nobody wants no, no longer a, a, a king that rules by the grace of God and that can do anything they want in the country. People started saying, wait, I don't want that. So the revolutions uh, started everywhere. Well, now we're at the point in history where we have the, the empire debasing its money and people feeling that, wait a minute, these crooked politicians that work for lobbyist groups that start endless war and that push infinite inflation on us may not be the best thing for our uh, our, our interests, you know? So, like everybody, may you be in Austria, may you be in Canada, may you be in America, you realize that today. So, we're at that point. We're at that tipping point, and it can go anywhere. 
is there like a global war on and freedom and like Bitcoin is the the one thing that is fighting back against uh, this global war on freedom, privacy, uh, on all those things that we have touched on? Yeah, ah, totally. Bitcoin is our best resource because we're going to defund, defund the central bankers that print money from thin air. And you see, you, you in every country, when you open the news, you hear about the debt and the debt and the debt. To who do we own this money? To who is the debt? They're going to say, yeah, well, uh, outside countries and, you know, some, some large businesses. But in reality, they're buying their own debt. America right now is issuing more debt to help Japan with its debt. And so it's all, uh, they're sucking their uh, their own dick, you know. it's it's They're making more debt to pay for debt. Imagine you having a credit card that is busted, busted and you just keep getting deeper in credit and you just, your spending becomes more and more crazy. You go to Dubai, you go to Prague, and you just, like, how how long can it go? Well, it, it, it the, the show went on because the American dollar was at the center of the world system, okay? And when they do the, did the Bretton Woods Accords with Nixon and they took the gold out and they made it entirely based on the trust on the, on the American uh, government, essentially, well... Since then, it went to shit. But now, since the beginning of the Ukrainian war, they have weaponized the dollar against Russia. Once you have the Americans seizing dollars that are Russian dollars in, in America or elsewhere, well, what do you think that every other dictator anywhere in the world or any other regime that has money in the U.S. dollar is thinking? They're thinking, listen, if we don't drink the Kool-Aid that the America wants us to drink, they're just going to take our money. So they're just looking now to new ways to go. So we see more and more countries that are no longer trading in the dollar. And what I foresee for the future is the petrol Bitcoin exchange. Because until now, the, 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 the most important cornerstone of the dollar is the petrol dollar. The deal that the, the Americans made with the Saudis back then to have the petrol dollar empowered the dollar and made it uh, you know, a, a central thing in the world. Now, less and less countries want the dollar because they understand that, first of all, it's getting debased with inflation at a, every year a faster uh, scale. And second, if you don't agree with their decadent LGBT plus uh, climate hoax bullshit, they can just take your money away. So why would uh, any African countries hold their reserves in dollars? You know, now they are doing it because they have to, but trust me, Everybody now is thinking about the other possibility. And there is where Bitcoin becomes really important. Because Bitcoin is not left, is not right, is not pro-Russia, is not pro-America, is not uh, anything. It's just a ledger anchored in mathematics and physics, decentralized, with energy as its backbone. Okay? So these things, any country, any human can understand those things. So, and we can agree with those things. So that's why everything is going in. And Bitcoin, how I see it, is like a black hole that opened in this plane of life. And this black hole is going to suck everything on. Because why would you have, uh, uh, you know, the the housing system based on Bitcoin? Why would you have the, the healthcare system based on Bitcoin? Why would you have the agricultural production based on Bitcoin? Why would not you... Like anything on the Bitcoin standard is better and it's going to create prosperity for the sector that adopts it. So everybody is going to adopt. And the example I would give you in history is the phones. You know, at first when smartphones went out, uh, some people, well, everybody had the flip phones, you know, the Motorola phone, the old phone. I had one. And my, one of my friends came and he was showing me his first Apple, you know, iPhone. And I was like, yeah, sure, it's not too bad, but why do I need it? I just want to make phone calls. I'll keep my flip phone. Fast forward a few years, everybody has a smartphone. You, yeah, some ranchers somewhere still have their flip phones. You know, some old old timers have their flip phone, but basically everybody has smartphones. Why? Because it's superior technology. It's as simple as that. It's superior technology and you have your Google Maps on it. You have your wallets on it. Now you can pay with it. 
So Bitcoin is superior monetary technology. So everybody is going in. And 100%. Uh, and I feel like um, we are at this point where we are getting closer and closer to this complete turnover of the revolution do this complete like actually it's bitcoin like we we agree on bitcoin right now it's not like that if you go on the streets and people ask you ask people oh, what's the future of money i feel like only a handful of people will uh, tell bitcoin but at some point we will come to this point we're like oh what's your money or what's the what what do you see as the future of the money more and more people will say bitcoin because they will get it uh intrinsically even though they don't understand what blockchain is what what like how the lightning layer works or something like that they will not understand this in the same way that uh, people also don't understand how uh, the tcp ip protocol works or how a whatsapp message actually is sent uh, i feel like only a really small portion of, of people can really explain this in detail but they don't but they understand if they click on that button and they get that second tick then the other person gets it and that's what people uh, will get about bitcoin if i save in bitcoin my purchasing power will go up i will have more purchasing power in the future and this is what uh, people uh, will get more and more and also the freedom aspects of bitcoin not only the monetary but all of the freedom aspects did you heard about that uncle that uh, got uh, locked out of the bank because he did that and that i thought he was a good guy why did he do that he's now on bitcoin because bitcoin does not do such uh, bullshit as you said yourself like it's 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 uh It, it will be so apparent that Bitcoin uh, is is this thing, and as a Bitcoiner, you always get this kind of a FOMO, and we're like, I have to buy a lot of Bitcoin now because tomorrow everybody will figure it out. <laughs> I feel like it, it will take some time, but um, the the impossible question to ask now is like, how long do you think can this old system, this fiat system, live on? Like, <laughs> it's it's well, been already long. I feel like. Well, you made some some important points, and I want to tell you. First of all, Bitcoiners like me and you, just by existing and just by talking about Bitcoin, there's many people that see us, what we're doing, you know, friends, neighbors, people we know. Every year they're going to, you know, yes, yeah, Hugo Kana went to a vacation again with his whole family. Oh, Hugo Kana is driving, uh, you know, a brand new Porsche. Oh, Hugo Kana just uh, planted a forest. How the fuck does Hugo Kana do that? So we're, we're doing it with an example, first of all. And second, once Bitcoin parties started to be created, and they will, well, it's going to be quite easy for them to win after the, a few years because like in the, you can go and say, listen, Bitcoin is worth, let's say, uh, 70,000 today, okay? And you build a political platform on the 70,000 Bitcoin, and then you don't get the left. Okay, because people, they, they'd rather keep the old parties. Then you co come back four years later. You say, okay, Bitcoin is now 200,000. Uh, here's another proposal. They're going to say, oh, wait, he told us last time it was seven. And now it's 200,000. No, we're not ready. He's still a crazy person. Okay, four years later, you, you come, you say, okay, now Bitcoin is worth 1 million. Here's the problem. So it's all the numbers. Eventually, people are going to say, okay, we should start to listen to these crazy, crazy Bitcoiner people since they seem to have endless buying power. Meanwhile, we're getting poorer and poorer. And yes, the regime is going to do everything to discredit it and they, as they are doing now. When Bitcoin drops 20%, you have news articles all across the world, exactly on time, telling everybody, Bitcoin dropped 20%. So when I have my boomer friends in my lion club with who I dealt with philanthropy, ask me, hey, Bitcoin dropped 20%. I say, yeah, it can drop 20%, 50%. It can go up 50%. It went up 100% this year. It doesn't matter. It is volatile, but it's not risky. And once you understand the difference between the volatility and a risk, well, then you understand Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has no risk. It has a lot of volatility. So that's the thing. We're going to get them slowly. They're going to start noticing our successes and our optimism. And Bitcoin is not just a monetary success. Bit Bitcoin realigns you with everything. It realigns you with yourself because it gives you the freedom to do so. It gives you the ability. It Bitcoin is not about making money. Bitcoin is about making money not via factor anymore. It's, it's no longer a factor. 
you you see all of these OGs in Bitcoin that have been there uh, many uh, cycles and that have been there since the first epochs. These people are rich, so they can do what they want. You have Sailor that founded the Sailor Academy. You have, uh, you know, Max Kaiser and Stacy going around El Salvador, uh, changing the whole country, helping people that were as afflicted by crime, uh, gang crimes and stuff like that. You can do whatever you want. You can educate people or you can live in some isolated island. So to go back to your question, sure, some people are going to just flee and go and live, you know, uh, their little life somewhere. But others like me, and I hope many more with me, are going to stay, resist, and use these resources that God has provided to us now to fix a better world. I don't want to live in a beautiful castle and eat caviar and see from the top of my room people dying on the streets from hunger and, you know, from uh, fentanyl and from all of these diseases they're pushing on us because we're getting poisoned by our food, by our water, if we're being lied to. So, like, we need to fix all of that. And once we fix all of that, we're going to truly unlock the human potential and we're going to truly, uh, you know, lead our devil man. And that's what we need to do. Bitcoiners, in my opinion, need to be leaders. Because if you are a Bitcoiner today, something happened in your life that led you to Bitcoin. And if you deeply understand Bitcoin today, that means that you have realigned yourself enough to understand some deep truths. And once you understand those deep truths, well, I think it would be very bad to just keep them to yourself and isolate yourself and live in the ivory tower as the current elites are doing. You know, do we want to be like them or do we want to be better? And I know I want to be better. And I know I want to, to push truth in everything. Truth in agriculture, truth in medicine, truth in, in weather, truth in, in everything. Because I believe in science, okay? And science is not what they tell you right now that the science is because there's a scientific consensus. There's not no such thing as a scientific consensus. Nobody gives a fuck about the scientific consensus. You know, they were cutting heads in the Renaissance period because somebody understood some deep scientific uh, things that didn't match with the scientific consensus at the time, okay? That today we look and we say, yeah, okay. Uh, in the medieval time when they were throwing their shit through the windows in the street, somebody probably said, hey, maybe it's not a good thing to throw shit in the street. It can cause plagues, you know? And he was probably burned at the state for not agreeing with the scientific consensus at the time. And right now, we're at the same time. Every step in human history, we seem to think that we're in the modern age. But we're still throwing shit through the windows. We're still doing some nonsense that we're going to look a hundred years from now and say, oh my God, we're, we were so, so stupid to do that. That was hurting us so much. Bitcoin is going to fix everything. And now we're at such an early stage that it's very difficult to understand. And most people are going to just come in for the greed. I had my lion friend the other day tell me, hey man, uh, thank you for telling me about the Bitcoin. I made 20% profit on it. And so he bought it, he made 20% and he sold it. And I was like, bro, this is, don't tell me that. I need to orange pill you once again. I'm going to orange pill you once again, because why would you do that? You had those, that money that you bought. It was working for you while you were sleeping. You had your small Bitcoin sat soldiers going out there and generating purchasing power to you while you sleep. And that's the best investment because the rest that you can buy with your money, if it's property, if it's uh, stocks, if it's a company or something, there's a judge somewhere that can sign a piece of paper. You never heard about these people and they're going to seize everything that you own for whatever reason. It may be for something that you said that they don't agree, that they're going to label as hate speech or whatever. Bitcoin, nobody can seize it. It's yours. It's working for you and your succession. It's working for your benefits forever. Forever. The only and, and, and after everybody's trying to do something, you know, you have these routines, these, uh, you know, financial gurus giving hints. Bitcoin, you need to do nothing. You buy it, you sit on it, and then you wait. And you decide once the, the moment is right, what strong action do you want to do? 
And if you were poor and you decide that you want to buy yourself a nice house and to buy your mama a nice house, well, you can do that. If you, you care about nature, you want to plant a forest, you can do that. So you need to do absolutely nothing except stack stats and try to live on the Bitcoin standard. That, that's my goal. I'm not there yet. I want to get there as soon as possible. There were a lot of interesting points in there. Like, first of all, I think, uh, as you said at the beginning, uh, it's so true that we are the signal. Like when we succeed in life and we are happy and fulfilled and we also have a lot of success in life, neighbors, uh, acquaintances, everybody will notice that. So in that way, we are the signal in all of the noise that is around us. Uh, I feel also like uh, we, we should start political parties in, in the countries that we're in and, and educate for some money and in freedom. We, we, we are human notes. We are human notes in the human uh, blockchain. Okay. The, in, the, in the human note uh, network, we are notes and then everything's, yeah, I, I love it. It's also like the first revolution and I'm not that good in, in history. Maybe you can correct me on that, but I feel like it's the first revolution when you take part in it, you actually gain financially from it. You don't have to pay for that revolution. You actually have to, if you actually gain from it. Uh, usually when you are acting in a revolution, you're uh, going against the forces. You have to spend a lot of resources to do that. In, in the Bitcoin revolution, you actually gain resources while you're participating in a revolution. I, I, am I correct? Was there something similar in, in history? Uh, no, it's not. you're totally correct. And I would like to remind your auditors, that uh, your listeners, that uh, the American framers, the American revolutionaries paid a dear price for what they did and the freedom they gave to their people. Many were had their property seized. And many died in poverty. They, they were so when you participated in the revolution, you paid a dire price, financial price and personal price, uh, you know, your family and stuff like that. So, yeah, you're right. This is the first revolution where we're getting rewarded to participate in because it's a whole new system. Bitcoin actually is uh, all, uh, it's our digital world touching for the first time, you know, that famous painting, uh, touching the physical plane of light. Okay. So that's what Bitcoin is. So we're at how I see it is like, a, you know, that sand clock has been reversed and now the grains of wealth are dropping into Bitcoin grain by grain, but it has been reversed. The whole grain of sand are going to go down into the Bitcoin net. It's just a matter of time. And the more that the sand leaves, well, the more sand is going to leave because like I'm telling you, there's bigger holes being made in the fiat system that they need to fill those holes with printing more fiat. And when they print more fiat, fiat they destabilize more things and more people are going to look for alternatives. And so if we have successful Bitcoiners that are operating successful Bitcoin companies and uh, su successful Bitcoin movements and so just talking about Bitcoin, like what we're doing right now is a very important and powerful thing. Words are more powerful than bullets because these words that we exchange today may be heard by somebody that may do something else and it may, might be heard by millions of people eventually. And among those millions, another people can understand something, say it in another way that another person can understand. So it spreads. Words are, are, are like a virus. So that's why tyrants through histories have always tried to silence us. And today, with the actual technology, you can silence it. And what is Bitcoin? Is that it's information. You can silence somebody from remembering his seed words. This you, you can memorize it, and you can work walk around with millions in your account just by remembering those words. And imagine how powerful that is. You can leave countries, go to another country, push a revolution there, or build a hotel there. Whatever you want to do. So it's a, it's a great power. And Bitcoin, you're right, is the first time. Because, yeah, there were other re revolutions. Once the revolutionaries, they get in power, they start to pillage and exploit the people to make themselves rich. The Bolsheviks, what they did in Russia, I mean, they created a whole new class of oppressors. And they were more extreme than, you know, than, uh, than the Tsar was in many aspects. But they were 
the answer to the absolute monarchy, monarchies that were in place and that were oppressing people for thousands of years. Bitcoin, there's no need for that. There's no need to pillage and to burn everything once you get in power. You, Bitcoin realigns things. And so there's a big difference between destroying and rebuilding and realigning. I don't want to burn the whole society down. As I still told you earlier, there's many things that are functional in our systems. We need to keep the good and to realign the bad. So that's how I see it. And I feel like we can even now see the, the beginnings of that when we look at places like El Salvador, when we look at uh, small places like even Lugaro in Swiss, when we look at uh, even like small communities or individual people that adopted Bitcoin, how that can change and how can that uh, better their lives and better the circumstances. You were also in, in, in Salvador with the, the halving party, uh, I, I think, right? Yeah, I was there with the 600 big, the most popular Bitcoiners. Uh, if you were there, you, you, you're not popular enough. No, I did it. Uh, no, there was OGs there. I mean, uh, Stacy Herbert, she's such a warrior. We, uh, we heard anecdotes about her uh, when they raised some money about, um, they, they raised some money to help families that were affected by crime. Uh, crime uh, uh, they went there to the, you know, the, the tough neighborhoods, distributing money uh, to these people. Max Kaiser was there. Uh, the OG, the, 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 the shit poster by excellence, the, the shit poster prophet, as I called him, was there. Uh, but uh, Eric Stacks, I mean, many other people were there. Roger 9000 uh, played music for us. I don't know if you saw what I posted. Uh, so the energy there was amazing. And that's why I, I wanted, I'm going to go to the Montreal conference next week. And uh, I might also go to Prague now that you have the hyped it for me. And I want to, eventually I want to do, do them all. I want to do the circuit. You know, I want to go around, talk to people. Because when you are around those people, you have this energy. You know, you you, you walk out of there uh, completely hyped about what's going on. And you see you see the people you talk, you, you see some other angles that you couldn't uh, maybe see before. And obviously, we were at the a five uh, star hotel uh, with beaches, with unlimited cocktails, and uh, you know, buffet food. So we uh, we were really enjoyed it. I I yeah, it, it was amazing. Uh, I love it. I love it. And I can only recommend to everybody to go to Bitcoin Prague uh, and to go to the Bitcoin conferences in general. Like uh, maybe Bitcoin Prague is far away because you're in America. Then there's like Nashville. There's so many other. Uh, Bitcoin conferences. I always hype Bitcoin Prague because it's really close to me. Uh, it's I feel like I think three hours I need there with train and car and everything. Uh, three hours around that time I need there. But there are a lot of great Bitcoin conferences uh, in this in this world, and, and I just encourage people to go somewhere. Bitcoin Prague is obviously good because there are so many people, uh, and then uh, I, I love the the feeling there. But you can get in any Bitcoin conference. And even if you don't want to get to a Bitcoin conference, just go to a meetup. Like there, there are usually local meetups with like 20 people, 10 people. Just go there and then feel like the the, the, the vibe there. And it's 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 great. It's like see Bitcoiners in real life. That's that's the life hack. <laughs> go go and, and meet them. The 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 main thing that I got out of the Halloween party is love. Love was the first team there. Everybody was spreading love. And that's why what, what is really fun in the Bitcoin is that we're not in competition against each other. You know, like it's some finance uh, circles where everybody's trying to outperform the other. We're at competition with our old self. We're at competition with our mindset. How deep are we in this Bitcoin rabbit hole? And when you see other Bitcoiners that are deeper than you and that tell you some deep truths, well, that, that can only realign you and be, help you become a better person. And then when you see these amazing creators in the Bitcoin space that create music, I mean, there, there, there was this uh, amazing uh, rapper that, uh, that, that, that was there, uh, this Asian girl that uh, does a great song called Time, Time Chain and others. I mean, it was my involved. The love and the optimism of there was really something and everybody noticed it like there was people there working the hotel because yeah el salvador has legalized bitcoin as a as a legal tender and but i mean 
there's a lot of people to Orange Pill in El Salvador. I I I, I Orange Pill maybe 15 people in, in El Salvador. Uh, Uber drivers, waiters, uh, business owners. Like I'm like, why aren't you doing? People are still, you know, they're cautious. They think that because they, they don't have enough money. And then when when I tell them, Bitcoin is not for the rich, it's not for the poor, it's for everybody. So if you can stack ten dollars of Bitcoin by month, do it. Do it. With that ten dollars, you're building a better future for you and your family because that ten dollars that you put that month is gonna work for you forever. It's gonna generate buying power for you forever. If you keep that ten dollars under your mattress in five, six years, you won't even be able to buy a, a McDonald's because the inflation is going out of control. Yeah, one hundred percent. And uh, I really loved it so much. And I overlooked a little bit of time. Usually, I go around one hour. We are overshooting the time today. Uh, I love it. Um, I still have before we go to our end routine one more question that I try to get integrated in every podcast nowadays. What are you currently extremely passionate about that we did not touch on in the podcast, like outside of Bitcoin, outside of history, politics, uh, everything that we touched on? Is there anything that you're currently extremely passionate about? What I'm pa passionate about currently other than Bitcoin and, uh, well, I'm just passionate about the truth. I think that uh, uh, everybody needs to speak their own mind. Even if it makes no sense, even if we are wrong, I'm wrong. I'm wrong on many things. Okay, we're all wrong. We're all uh, flawed. And uh, for me, the thing that I'm most passionate about, and this is even more than than Bitcoin and, and anything, is God. Okay, because God, Bitcoin realigns us with God as well. Bitcoin is mathematical truth that we discover, and truth leads to God. For me, God is. Our whole Western societies were, were built on God, okay? The fact that you res respect another human life, the fact that we, you know, we do so many things that were there because of this purpose, that, that initial purpose, that's what I'm passionate about. And that's why I should post a lot. And sometimes I should post things that will make people uncomfortable. But I don't care. If people don't agree with me, they can go fuck themselves. And I say that with, with love. I love everybody. We can disagree, but don't come to me and tell me what I can or cannot say, what I can and cannot think, because these freedoms to me were God given. And I'm going to respect him by, I'm going to honor, honor him by standing my ground and saying the truth as I see it. Not the truth that somebody else is pushing on me and uh, like, uh, to please, this, uh, please this or that. I don't care. I, I'll never do personal attacks except on like fucking evil villains that are pushing evil shit on us. But in general, I hate nobody. I hate truly nobody. But I think that there's a lot of shit fuckery going on. And most of it is still going on because people are not courageous enough to denounce the falsehoods on which these shit fuckeries are based. Okay? If you see something that is wrong, if you see something that makes no sense, first step is to say it. This thing makes no sense. For an alcoholic, the first step is to accept that he's an alcoholic before he can help himself. Well, now as a society, we've, we've strayed so far away from God that the first step is to say, listen, there's some evil fucking forces around us doing some evil shit. Okay. And everybody needs to see this plate. The veil is lifting and it's lifting on everything. And that's why things seem so vulgar and so stupid and so obsolete today. It's because we're seeing finally the things as they truly are. And the, there's Bitcoin is going to help us realign with, with God. So that's what I'm really passionate about. I but I, I don't, and I just want to say something. And I, I want to criticize Max Kaiser. Bitcoin is not God. Bitcoin is a tool. It has divine in it. It has divine in it because it has truth in it and it has peace in it and it has prosperity in it. So it has God in it, but it's not God. Okay. God created things much more complicated than Bitcoin. He created the galaxy. He, he, he created the infinite universe. So let's not, uh, we're, we're nothing. Humans, we're, we're just living on the top of this one planet. We have big egos. We think we can affect the, you know, the, the climate and affect, but the, tr the reality is that we can have a solar flame 
flare destroy us completely. We can have an asteroid destroy us completely. We can have a super volcano destroy us completely. We ain't shit. We're still nothing trying to become something, okay? And Bitcoin is going to be a powerful tool with that. But we need, after that, once we, we reach a point where Bitcoin has empowered us, not to go into a, uh, some kind of a weird Bitcoin is God, uh, you know, cults. Bitcoin is a tool the same way fire, when we invented fire, it became a powerful tool. Well, Bitcoin is a tool. And I want to end with this. Jesus put fire to the world and Bitcoin is the kerosene. It's going to burn the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> I love that so much. Uh, Perfect. Then uh, we can, uh, and I don't, even, I don't even want to... Uh, uh, put anything additional on that because this was just in itself perfect and uh, I love it. Uh, I will put it probably in the in the trailer in, in the beginning of the episode. Let's see how, how it uh, how it goes. For the end routine, we have something really cool. We have like kind of a blockchain uh, thing where the previous guest is asking a question from the next guest. So they're like all the episodes are kind of like connected with the guests to each other. Uh, this is the one question that I don't, is not coming from me, but it's coming from someone else. Uh, and the question for you is like, do you have an exit plan for Bitcoin? Uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna burn with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes to minus hundred dollars, I'm still gonna stack Sats. If Bitcoin makes me poor every year, I'm still gonna stack Sats, and I'm gonna try to work hard to rehabilitate the system because Bitcoin is not just a system. Bitcoin is also an idea, and ideas are more powerful than any system because ideas can always you know be used to better this system. And Bitcoin is a living code. Bitcoin can be hijacked. Like it doesn't mean that if it hadn't been destroyed until now that it can be destroyed. We don't know. But what we know is that the idea and the 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 the, the values of Bitcoin now are deeply entrenched into our brains. So no I'm going down with Bitcoin. I'm gonna be like the pianist on the Titanic still playing while the ship sinks. I'm gonna be that we are, we are willing to die on, 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 on this sale. I love it. Before, before we close, before I let you go, uh, where can people find you and ask you questions? Like, uh, is, is there the, the best way to reach out to you anywhere? Uh, I'm on X, so you can reach me with the handle 021Bitcoin. So zero and one are numbers. Zero to one Bitcoin. That's my handle. You can see my shit posting there. And uh, if you want to stack some sats, I have a link there with my bold Bitcoin mission account where people can get a $20 free if they subscribe. And I also like to promote my webpage, the Bitcoin Central, where I have made a collection of hoodies with the Bitcoin logo. It's called Bitcoin for Peace. I, it's all white. It's, I, I created this collection during the genocide. So... If you like the, if you like to wear Bitcoin on you uh, and to orange pill people indirectly just with your swag, well, the BitcoinCentral.com is the place. Definitely, and uh, wearing something Bitcoin can be extremely powerful. Just like a small thing, uh, like a cap where there's a small Bitcoin thing in, like a sweatshirt, like that can be really powerful. Just a sticker on the car can even be powerful. I, I, I love it a lot. Look at this. I love it. <laughs> Don't so trust to verify. And I have also my uh, El Salvador, you know, name tag with the six. And I have Jesus Christ with me. So I'm, uh, I'm Tesla. You can't, uh, you can't destroy me. Really cool. Perfect. Then uh, thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. I mean, it's a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for spreading the world, uh, the word. And I, uh, you're an OG of Bitcoin. In a few epochs, you're going to be seen as, the, you know, maybe the Dr. Dre of Bitcoin. Who knows? I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>